Welcome back to another episode commentary. This time, we are covering the Knight Rider episode, A Knight in Shining Armor. In this episode, Michael goes after a woman from his past who abducts a man whose DNA contains a key to an unbreakable code. Oh, wow, that sounds pretty advanced for an episode from 1984. Wait, what? Wrong Knight Rider series? <sighs> Why did they have to name an episode of the 2008 Knight Rider series the exact same as an episode of the classic series? Well, it's too late now, so I guess we'll switch over to the Knight Rider 2008 series for this episode commentary. What's that you say? You'd rather dig your eye out with a spork? Okay, fine. We can't have that going on here. We'll review the classic 1984 episode, A Knight in Shining Armor. But there's a problem. I've already written up a description of the newer episode. Well, let's see if I can change a few words to make it applicable to the classic one. So the new one is, Michael goes after a woman from his past who abducts a man whose DNA contains a key to an unbreakable code. Uh, let's see, if we can just change around a few words, and yeah, I think that should work. All right, let's try this. Michael goes after a woman who is abducted by a man because her locket contains a key to an unbreakable code. I think I did it. That was a close call. Sunday on Knight Rider, Michael kidnaps a co-ed in order to save her life, but will her bad manners get them both killed? Knight Rider, Sunday. Sunday, Michael kidnaps an ungrateful co-ed to save her life. You've got your dashboard to keep you company. Such a brat. Bad manners get them both killed? Knight Rider, Sunday. Sunday, Michael kidnaps an ungrateful co-ed to save her life. You've got your dashboard to keep you company. But will her bad manners get them both killed? Knight Rider. Be there. Production 57832, A Knight in Shining Armor. This episode was written by Janice Hendler and Tom Green. It was directed by Bernard McEvity. This episode originally aired on NBC Sunday night, 8 p.m. on January 8th, 1984. It was filmed from November 8th through the 16th of 1983. This was the 33rd episode to air, but the 34th episode to be produced. I'm not going to read the synopsis again since we already went over that. So with that, let's go ahead and dig in. Starting with this opening screen, this is one of, again, four episodes in the entire series that was actually filmed at the Pasadena mansion called Arden Villa, which was the home to Flag Headquarters. Uh, throughout the 80s, this mansion has been used in tons and tons of, of movies and TV shows. But um, we know it as the Flag Headquarters. So the other episodes, again, uh, White Bird, Brothers Keeper, Knight in Shining Armor, and Goliath Returns. So any other time you see Arden Villa in the series outside of those episodes, it is stock footage from when they filmed during one of these four appearances. All right, so we have our opening scene with Michael. We can tell this is the insert car because we have our chrome coat hooks, which you know. And you get a really great look, probably one of the best looks at the uh, trunk pull cable right here. Most, but not all, of the original Knight Rider cars were given this trunk pull handle. And there's a number of times in the series when Kit needs to pop his trunk, and you can actually see someone laying in the back seat. They pull this handle to pop the trunk. Um, the one that comes to mind is Silent Night, which we just, uh, which I just pointed out in the previous episode commentary installment. You can also see just little things that they did to these cars. For example, kind of hard to see, but right here, they actually put a screw through the side of the speaker cover just to help secure it. They put a screw there, they put a, some screws in the doors. And what's really cool is, since this is the car that we own, details like these, these uh, screws had been gone because the car had been restored prior to us getting it. But we pulled off 
the speaker panels on both sides and guess what we saw screw holes right there so whenever we put it back together we put a screw in there just a little detail to help bring back some of that history of the car and we have michael going to the woodgrove school for young ladies um, for the longest time i we couldn't figure out where this location was at first you know with with the style of the architecture of the buildings it looked just like arden villa so i thought well maybe it's a, a a house nearby or part of the estate that we had never seen before but of course many many years later i found out that it was actually alverno high school in sierra madre and the reason we can find details like that out is because we have things like call sheets and this is a call sheet um, this is one of the call sheets from a knight in shining armor and this tells us woodgrove school alverno high school and you can see times and and everyone that had to be on set during that day but things like this um hugely helpful in in determining what cars were used when the filming dates were where the filming locations were all that stuff so we can see thursday november 10th 1983 so this scene was filmed november 10th 1983 and if you want to see what this looks like today there we are the gates are still intact that's where Kit drove through. It's funny because you look at it here and it looks like a car could not even fit through those gates, but clearly it did. So that's where it would have said the Woodgrove School for Girls right there. So then um, we get, the, I always love this scene uh, where Kit goes to self-drive, but uh, this is a, a nice close-up we see of this the uh, front of Kit. This is the hardtop stunt car. You can see there's no tow bar underneath. We see the shadow of a skid plate. We can see a sagging uh, front nose, which uh, became very prominent on this car as we enter the second half of the second season. We can also see we've got a broken side marker right there. And then all of a sudden it switches. So take a look at this. So we see this. Notice, see the gaps here and the sag here, no tow bar. And then we instantly switch and all of a sudden this is the left hand blind drive car and we can see we have a tow bar we can see the bumper fits a little bit better we can see the right hand uh, sun visor there and we can see no marker it's blacked out how about that and then this was pretty cool this small turbo boost over some fallen trees and um, this is still the left hand blind drive car one of the rare times they jumped the left hand blind drive car but we can see this stunt guy here flying through the air and then bang almost knocks his head over love that and then whenever he lands look at how the bumper is now sagging and uh, i don't think i have it captured here but the windshield wipers start going off either so yeah whatever and then we see this close-up shot. This is still the left-hand blind drive car with Hasselhoff hanging out the top. And um, this was, again, before they had the right-hand blind drive car. So um, they, the stunt driver, if you look here, you can see the hood of someone sitting behind there. But he had to look through between his legs and out the window to see where he was going. And then Michael stops Catherine. Um, clearly not Hasselhoff and not Daphne Lee Ashbrook, but that's okay. So then after he talks to Catherine Granger, convinces her to go with them, they go back to the main building. This is one of the few times in the series where it's raining. Kit's wet. And this is what I was saying. So they pull in here. This is what I was saying earlier about the architecture. See these arches and see how much it looks like Arden Villa. So that's why for the longest time I thought, well, maybe this was a building on the grounds. Because um, the, the residents of Arden Villa um not the residence the the actual house the 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 estate used to be much bigger and back i forget when many many decades ago uh, a portion of it was sold off and um, what remains now is still what you saw back in the night rider days but i always wondered well maybe this was an additional building on those grounds and this is part of the 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 piece that was sold off but that's not the case this is um, not even close to arden villa just happened to be a coincidence that the architecture was very similar so but here you can see uh today let's find it right here yeah so it pretty much looks identical to what it did back then and of course we must mention the fabulous lance lego um appearing here his second appearance in the series first time since the pilot um it, it was interesting we talked to daphne lee ashbrook who played katherine granger we haven't showed a picture of her yet but 
Um, we talked to her many years ago and she talked about her audition process and uh, how April Webster, the casting director, was very concerned because while Catherine could act very well, she looked very young. But April took a, a chance on her and it was one of Catherine's first uh, TV roles. But she did say how fabulous it was working with Lance and she would later get a chance to work with him again in an episode of The A-Team. I wonder, put it in the comments below, did Lance Legault ever play a good guy in any of his in his uh, roles in his career did he ever play a good guy i mean he it's like he was born he was born to play the bad guy but did he ever play a good guy put in the comments below i'd love to know maybe i'll check it out and uh early car phone here the gl2000 i actually found one of these for sale on ebay if you guys are interested if you want to recreate lance's uh car here anyways so there's daphne um, and of course, off to the left here, who do we have but Tom Wilson. This was his first TV role um, about a year before his breakout as Biff Tannen in Back to the Future. And while we're on the topic, uh, here's Julie Ronnie. And um, she was in this episode, but she would return. She played Stacy here, but she'll return in season four. She has a bigger role in season four in The Wrong Crowd as part of, well, The Wrong Crowd. So Michael decides to take matters into his own hands and um, puts Catherine in kit. And I point this out, not uh, there's, there's nothing specific to show you here other than this is a great view of the original hero car. Still looking pretty nice um, with all of its buttons intact, lighting up, things like that. So nice, really, really nice view of the hero car. And then we got... Um, uh, whatever the name's Chip and Scott, I think. Going to chase uh, Michael to try and save Catherine. Obviously, it's not going to work. But you have a couple plates here um, without the California lettering on it. Clearly prop plates. This one off to the right is not a prop plate. This is an actual um, California-issued plate. But these are prop plates. We own uh, this plate, I believe. I think that's the plate we own. Yeah, we own those plates. They were reused again in Goliath Returns for Garth's limo. So this is the insert car, the one we own. And, um, you know, we pointed this out throughout the beginning of our season two commentary. For the longest time, this car just had a blank console here. There was a gap right here. It, it wasn't very form-fitting. It kind of bowed in the middle. There were no buttons on it. But at this point in the series, they've now finally... Um, done this up a little nicer right it's more form-fitting all the buttons are there and you can see that in this great um, shot that's kind of pulled out a little bit usually you see a close-up of of Hasselhoff or whoever's in the passenger seat this is a nice time when they backed it off a little so you could you could uh, kind of see the whole thing and they probably did that because this is they fixed this and it was looking good now I really want to mark it I really do I really do can I mark it uh, uh, wait a second I want to mark the thing A B C thank you <laughs> And then we cut to, again, the hardtop stunt car, and you can see the, the bow in the uh, nose there. And clearly that's Jack Gill, and this is some, this is not Daphne Lee Ashbrook, some stunt lady. Then we move to this uh, miniature shot, and I never noticed just the, the, the detail here of the cans and the tire on the ground, but this is uh, Sesams and Slagle miniature work. And there's actually... Um, an outtake of this scene that we don't see here, but we actually see it in um, the fourth season in Night of the Juggernaut. There's a scene where um, the, the Knight Foundation board run by Jennifer Knight shows Michael um, a videotape of some of his destruction. And one of those scenes is Kit Turbo Boosting, not through a train car, but well, the, well, he jumps through it, but it's not an open train car. There's doors here, and he busts through the doors. Um, and that's where that scene came from. It came from this episode. It was filming for this episode, but it, it ultimately went unused for this episode, but we would see it in Night of the Juggernaut. Yeah, and there's the other side, the landing. This is the scene we see, and um, this is the angle we see in Night of the Juggernaut from this side. And... Just a, a neat scene here with uh, Tom Wilson's character. And this is Andy Gill, Jack Gill's brother right here. 
and you'll notice he doesn't have any speaking lines, which I don't think he does at all in the series, but um, that's Andy Gill. So for all of you who own Trans Ams, this scene makes you cringe, right? You never sit on these doors. They're so heavy and long, and you sit on the door, you're going to bend the hinges, and then it's not going to close right. So fortunately, Kit doesn't have that problem, but I wouldn't do it on your car. So we return to the foundation, and nice little touch. Um, they have Devin's Mercedes convertible sitting out front here. We never see it at all throughout the rest of the episode, but I guess when they were dressing the set, they decided to put Devin's Mercedes outside. So that was pretty cool. And this is the only time in the series we see more than the foundation. You know, he we see that there's this extension here of the driveway, and this building right here is actually a garage. Um, looks like a two-stall garage. I don't think this is here anymore. I think this got torn down. Um, but so they drive through here, and then they suddenly end up at this cottage, which was not filmed at Ardenville. It was filmed in a completely different location. But. So then Michael goes to Christopher Stone's house, and uh, this is obviously a scene reused from season one, Chariot of Gold. Um, Hasselhoff even dressed in his uh, tweed jacket with uh, tan patches on it, uh, specifically to match this scene. So then you see this, where he's climbing up the trellis, and I believe this might be Arden Villa. I think this is Arden Villa. I don't think this is the um, the Woodgrove School. I think this is a close up of Arden Villa. Um, obviously, Christopher Stone doesn't live at Arden Villa, but they needed, you know, to be able to shoot a scene like this, so they shot it at Arden Villa. And once again, we get this other great view here of Arden Villa. This is from the side. The front of the house is off here to the left. This is the famous lily pond um, from that famous cat fight in Dynasty and. And uh, thankfully, all of this is still intact and still looks exactly the same, except obviously the house is now painted yellow. Other than that, unchanged for 40 years. Catherine calls Christopher Stone, and he says that he'll meet her at the corner of Aberdeen and Vermont, um, where then he, you know, ambushes her and kidnaps her. But, um, you know, what's really interesting, and I'm kind of surprised they did this, this filming location is at the corner of Aberdeen and Vermont. That is a legit location. So if we go to Aberdeen and Vermont, here we are. There's the house. It's hard to see here. Let me zoom in a little bit. So see this window over here? There it is over here. Obviously this natural stone has been painted and that tree, look at this. There's that tree with that knot right there and look, Still has that knot right there. So um, he pulls down this way, parks right here, and then kidnaps her. But it is actually Aberdeen and Vermont in Los Angeles. How about that? Michael, it's a little bit blurry. He moves his arm. We can see this is not his famous comlink, but an imposter. And um, nice little touch again with the set dressing. Got to give them credit. They have a video phone here, just like you know you'd expect to see on the other end when when Devin calls Michael in the car. He's obviously looking into something. It's neat that they have the video phone here. And someone's dog got loose, so we might want to take care of that. So then we have Michael jumping to uh, ambush Christopher Stone. I always like this because it's clearly not Lance Legault. It's Jack Gill once again, and that's clearly not. Um, Hasselhoff, but it's his stunt double. That is Daphne Lee Ashbrook, though. And look at that. That's great. Not Hasselhoff. I love that. And then this is great, too. So then it finally turns to Hasselhoff. He punches um, Christopher Stone, and magically, Christopher Stone takes the punch, dives into the car, and Michael closes the door. I always thought that was real cheesy, because really, if you're going to get punched, you're not going to bend down and dive into the car. You'll you'll fall back and hit the car and fall to the ground, but whatever. And left-hand blind drive car again. Uh, we can clearly see the hood here. We've got the um, right-hand sun visor there. And for all of you wondering about how many cars they used in this episode, they used five cars. We have the hero car. We have the backup to the hero car, which is the insert car. Now, I keep calling it backup to the hero car, insert car. We have the hardtop stunt car. We've got um, the, this left-hand blind drive car. And 
we have the manual transmission stunt car, which we talked about in the last episode. Um, we saw it in Silent Night. We'll see it again here in a minute. So after they bust into the um, into the uh, cavern, I guess you could say, um, we see the shot, and we've got a white wire right there. There's your white wire for today. You guys can sleep easy now. And I was this was this was neat. So so Kit's backing up. They're dumping dirt on. This was all filmed, um, I think, on a soundstage at Universal, would be my guess. But they actually used the hero car for this scene. They were dumping dirt and rocks on the hero car. You can see the dash right there, um, which just shocks me. I don't know why they wouldn't use a stunt car with the rubber shell on it, um, but instead they used the hero car. So and undoubtedly, there was some uh, body work that needed done on this car after this scene. And then we have the one and only time in the entire series we get a reverse turbo boost. Um, and it's interesting because there, there are scenes in the series in season two where um, you can see an actual reverse turbo boost button on the switch pods. You know, when Michael's pressing, uh, I don't know, oil or micro jam, you can see the reverse turbo boost button. But in this scene, when they actually do the reverse turbo boost, they press the regular turbo boost button. I don't know. But this car, this is the um, the manual transmission stunt car. The one that we mentioned in our last commentary on Silent Night that has the tan A pillars. The one that would become gutted and put into uh, the, the acid pit in Junkyard Dog. And the car that would eventually become the transforming Super Pursuit car is the car that's doing this stunt here. So we can see it flies out. It's got a skid plate underneath. And then we turn to this angle. You can just see the edge of the, the ramp right here. And then it lands. And, um, you know, talk about cheesy CGI back then. Michael, for, for one frame, you see that they added in the sparkle of this uh, rock that Michael's carrying. So then we come to the end of the episode, and Michael is wearing his best uh, Garth Knight jacket once again. Uh-oh. Jailbreak! All right, and with that, we are wrapping up A Knight in Shining Armor. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Next time, we will dig into Diamonds Aren't a Girl's Best Friend, the episode where Michael gets a very, very important wardrobe upgrade something you might not have noticed as always guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time and now while we listen to joe's selection of knight rider music that we received directly from don peak himself we'd like to thank these patreon supporters look at you guys scrolling up the screen to my right wait a minute how can you tell which side is my right since you can't see me because i'm not on camera oh well you know what I mean. We are featuring these fine supporters at our Knight Rider prop restorer level. Thank you very much for your support. And for those of you at the Knight Rider history hunter level, we're recognizing you right now in the description. Now, if you enjoyed seeing this golden nugget of Knight Rider history being rescued from obscurity, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support would empower us to bring you even more of these historical nuggets we are the Knight Rider Historians. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.